Thank you for joining me and the Pool Dinosaur, where we're gonna be discussing how I get organized, how I break up my studying into 90 minute chunks, how I set up my calendar, how I color code my calendar, everything that I do to keep myself organized so I can get done what I need to get done for school and so I can set myself up for success. Last term, I'm really happy with how I finished. I got a 92% on my final exam in biology and then I finished my food science course. If you guys watched my cheese science video, you already know I'm like a cheese science pro. I finished my food science course with a 94% and I'm super, super proud of. And then I did quite well in my biochem course. So I know what things work for me and I know what doesn't work for me and so in this video I'm gonna tell you what does work as someone with ADHD that kind of needs to be moving and wiggling around all the time and I'm just sharing my study strategies also as per usual I did get distracted at one point and I went to winners I got beetroot powder if you're curious about how beetroot powder will improve athletic performance stay tuned and if you're curious about why I drink coconut coffee in between my study periods stay tuned as well so me and the dino buddy are gonna be jumping on into this video. I'm in my fitness gear because I'm going to the gym right now. Three days a week, I'm gonna be going to the gym, walking on the treadmill for a minimum of one hour. I can do more if I want, but my standard is set at one hour, three days a week. And my other fitness goal or my other fitness standard is three days a week, I'm going in and I'm doing strength training. I can do more days a week if I want, but my standard, <coughs> froggy in my throat, standard I'm setting for myself, three days a week no excuses that is what i do oh my god i'm talking on and on forever i'm just gonna stop filming now i'm going to michael's to get myself a calendar so that's your guys's first task order a calendar order a chalkboard you don't want to get a dry erase board because if you're just like erasing everything and breathing in the dry erase fumes you're gonna kill your neurons and you're gonna wipe out your brain cells get a chalkboard get a calendar and let's just get into this whole video because i'm taking so much long time Woo! We've actually just run into a problem. I don't even have my wallet with me. Change of plans, I'm going to the gym now. After this video, I'm gonna show you how I'm getting organized. These are all the chalkboard things and I'm gonna get this one. One thing. Ugh, it won't come off the thing. Wait, I'm not tall enough. Got it. Okay, time to update you on literally everything that I got at the store. I went to Winners because I did need to get a calendar, but did I get a calendar? absolutely not what i did get was this water bottle i'm not too happy about the color i mean like i do like the color peach but the problem was all the water bottles were kind of ugly or halloween themed i would have felt kind of goofy walking around the gym with a ghost water bottle i also found this at winners it's organic beetroot powder beetroot is super super rich in nitrates and your body needs nitrates to make nitric acid I mean, uh, nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a vasodilator. So basically what that means is it's like this chemical signal to the endothelial cells of your vascular system. It tells your blood vessels to loosen up, like to dilate, to widen. Once your blood vessels widen, you're increasing blood flow. So right, there's more space for blood to be flowing through those tubes, getting oxygen, nutrition, glucose, ketones, and metabolic waste to and from in and out of all your working cells your working muscle so there's all this research on athletes showing that if you supplement with beet juice or if you literally just eat more beets you have improved athletic performance improved endurance and like improved race time i also got gum if you guys are like hardcore into health you're probably thinking what the hell am i doing chewing gum i'm kind of thinking the same thing too because last week at the gym by accident i swallowed it i'm not gonna lie it actually made me like super super gassy if i do chew this which i will be chewing it because that's gum and that's what you do with gum i'm gonna be super super careful not to swallow it and then i got this pink sea salt bun oh no no that says nude these are sea salt flax pumpkin seed sunflower crackers i'll show you the ingredients they're super clean super high fiber super nutrient dense no coconut oil no seed oil like there's no fat in here or anything if you're avoiding seed oils get these if you're not avoiding seed oils you should be avoiding seed oils and why are seed oils important to avoid because literally your whole entire body is made of cells your skin your heart your blood vessels your brain each cell is lined by this layer of fat where do these fats come from? Don't just 
appear out of nowhere, these fats come from your diet. If your diet's high in seed oils, these heavily processed industrial oxidized oils, you're making your cell membranes out of these fatty acids. And that cell is making up your body. If it's incorporating these heavily oxidized, damaged, chemically transformed fats from seed oils into their membrane, that cell's at increased risk of cellular dysfunction. And then also having more of these oxidized fatty acids floating around your body, you're increasing risk of DNA mutation or damage to mitochondria, which is impairing metabolic health or increasing risk of cancer. That's like the science behind why you want to avoid seed oils because everybody talks about seed oils being a disaster, but like, why are they actually a disaster? Well, it's because your body's going to build itself out of the fats you feed it. So why would you feed it chemically transformed oxidized fats? <laughs> I need to drink water. Drank in my water. Well, actually I drank a watered down bio steel because I'm not actually exercising right now. So I don't really think I need all that sodium. So I just water it down to dilute the sodium. So that leads me into my number one, very most essential tip. Make yourself a calendar. Right now I'm going through all my course syllabi and I'm noting the exact dates and times of all my major projects, midterms and final exams. I'm also going through and I'm looking at how I'm being graded in my courses. The reason why you want to do this is so you can get your priorities in order. My biology course, my midterm is worth 20%. My final is worth 50%. I have a major assignment worth 33% and some of my teeny little, teeny little reading assignments. Each one of those is worth only like 0.5%. That tells me that my major project is more important than my midterm. Because I'm busy, I run a business, I see clients and I'm still a university student and I still want to be able to go to the gym. Knowing that my pre-reading assignment it's only worth 0.5%. I know that if something more important comes up or if I need to meet with a client, that client can take priority over that assignment that's only worth half a percent of my grade. Now, I don't actually do this because I think it just takes too much time, too much effort, but you can organize your priorities in your calendar by color so it's even more obvious what's most important, what's least important. Exams, that's number one. Business and clients, number two. Learning Russian, Spanish, and going to the gym, those are all things I would really like to do. They just aren't as critical as nailing my exams. And you're probably gonna wanna make like ultra important things, fire hydrant red. If it's not so important, it can be like a pastel pink or peach or a soft yellow color. Well, you can see now I do have my calendar all set up. I did end up doing some color coordination. Yellow, that's going to be math. Green is going to be biology. Big block of bright purple, that's when I have my chem labs. Great big important things like my biology midterm. I've just noted that it's 20% and I put it in that big bright red, fire hydrant red. Also, you can see I have a high tendency for distractibility. I've been making my YouTube covers when I should really be getting organized. Study tip number two, organize your study time into 60 to 90 minute study chunks. I turn on a 90 minute timer, phone goes on airplane mode, and I announce to everybody in the house, everybody in the vicinity, do not talk to me, do not come in my periphery, like leave me alone for these 90 minutes and just let me sit and work. I set my objective and I set my intention so I know what I want to get done and what I need to get done. And then I just sit down, I work and I get it done. That's it. Once that 90 minute timer goes off, that's your break time. Your brain needs that to reset, refresh. When I have my little break, I'll go downstairs. I'll lift a few weights, jumping jacks, push-ups, whatever I'm doing, I'm getting my body moving and I'm getting out like all my extra pent up energy. I'm quite, quite ADHD. So for me in these little breaks, I need to be doing something with my hands or I need to be moving my body. Also moving your body is going to increase blood flow all around your body, increase blood flow to your brain. If you're getting more blood flowing to your brain that also means you're getting more oxygen delivered to your brain which in the end result is going to support cognition and support brain health another good thing about increasing blood flow is more waste is going to get cleared from your brain so you're reducing the risk or likelihood of mild cognitive impairment when you're really really old another tip i forgot to mention if you drink coffee to your kombucha in this 90 minute chunk that's when you want to make your coffee tea or pour your kombucha into like a nice little champagne glass so you feel fun and fancy. If you are drinking coffee, I'll put coconut oil or no, I'll put coconut cream, 17 to 30% fat coconut cream in my latte. And that's giving my brain this source of MCTs. Those MCTs are getting rapidly absorbed, transported to my liver where they get transformed into ketones. And those ketones get shipped around my body straight into my brain. And they are like this rocket fuel for your neurons. So my 
pre-study stack if it's like going to be a really hardcore biochem study session coconut cream latte and then i'll put a little salt in there definitely would not recommend taking energy drinks because the ingredients in there can be pretty brutal and pro-inflammatory or they're loaded up with all this sugar and that's just going to spike your blood sugar give you some brain fog once you come down from that sugar crash afterwards. Stick with coffee, tea, or kombucha, and then put your MCT supplement or coconut cream in there. Here is, sorry, I'm like stuck in my bag. This is my last official tip. It's set your intentions and set clear goals for yourself. You wanna know exactly what you're going to accomplish because if you don't know what you're going to do, what are you even doing? So set your intentions and set your goals. When you're setting like your intentions and your goals for that 90 minute study sprint, you're gonna wanna use an agenda or like a little calendar just like this. So today in my 90 minute study sprint, I was like dedicating that whole thing to biology. I popped open my biology course website and I saw what does my professor specifically want us to get out of this week's lessons. Basically this whole week was a review. It was just on amino acids, membrane sterols, nucleic acids, and lipids. So I knew right away going into that little study block that my intentions are to fully understand membrane lipids, membrane sterols, nucleic acids, acids and amino acids. Once I write that down right here in my book, I know very clearly that this is what I need to accomplish and understand. If I don't understand it, then I can just either not tick it off, exit out, highlight it, or I can make like a little extra note right here. I was getting super confused about sterols and phosphocholine and phosphatidylcholine. I'm still confused about them. I haven't taken these questions to office hours yet. So I made the extra note right here and then I'm gonna go in and like tick, 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 tick these guys off because this is what I accomplished. And then this is just reminding me, hey Elsa, that's what you were really stuck on. Take that up in office hours. Once I understand this and I take it up in office hours, then I take it off again. So before you go into your study session, set your intention like this is what I'm gonna accomplish. This is what I'm gonna master. I'm gonna go through the whole entire practice exam. If you're studying, this is my biggest, bestest tip. If you're studying for exams, do the practice exams. Turn your phone on that 90 minute timer or the one hour timer, however many time you get for your exam. Sit down and do the practice exam. And then when you're done the practice exam, check your answers and do it over and over and over again until you get 100% on the practice exam. That's how you're gonna nail your exams in real life because practice exams are literally exams from the previous year. So why would you not do them? It's now three or four days later since when I actually started filming this video and we finally finished it, hooray! So I hope you liked these tips. If you didn't like these tips, that's unfortunate. If you did like these tips, that's super awesome because now you're gonna do really well in university. If you wanna know what I eat for brain health, why I eat for brain health and what I eat for skin health. And I promise you, I actually do know a thing or two about skin health. Just ignore this pimple here. But if you do want to know what I eat for skin health, what I eat for brain health, watch my other video called, I think it's literally going to be called, I don't know. I have a few videos I'm filming right now, so I don't know what the name of it's going to be called, but you'll see it on my channel. And it's a photo of me holding a bag of macadamia nuts and pistachio nuts. And then the title says something about brain health. So you're going to watch that video to know what to eat for brain health. And this concludes the video for realsies this time. Bye, everybody. See you later.